Hello everyone, Loco here, and welcome to another high-level match of StarCraft 2. Actually, I shouldn't be saying high-level match, because apparently some of you believe whenever I introduce a series as a high-level match that it's lower than the professional introduction. Welcome to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Apparently there's like a, a mental tier list that some of you keep for my very specific intros. I honestly never really overthink them that much, if I'm being honest with you, but anyways, spotting right here in the top left hand corner, representing himself on the main hatchery. We have none other than Dark. His opponent in this best of three series, playing with the blue Protoss pieces, he goes by the name of Creator. Alrighty, good old gateway on the low ground. I saw the probe in the natural, I saw the structure over there, and for just a moment, I know it never happens at this level, right? But for just a moment, I, I chose to believe that this could be a forge first. Uh, I saw somebody a couple of days ago in the YouTube comments section asking whether or not those strategies still exist. Because if you haven't really watched a lot of StarCraft 2, right? Say, for example, I know a lot of people keep coming back to this game. Say, for example, you played this game for the last time in 2013 and cheeses were still very popular. Forge first was still a common strategy going into, of course, a cannon rush, right? All of those builds are still technically around. It's just, it's not even that they necessarily got nerfed, although some of them did, but on the whole, a lot of those builds are still around in one shape or one form or another. Um, it's just that the top of the line programmers, like for example, these two, and really all of the players that I feature on my channel, they're all really good at the game. So when they're really good at the game, they tend to not die to stupid stuff. And honestly, I, I think that's one of the best examples of how the skill level has grown a lot over the years in SC2. Because in the early days, the top level players would die to dumb builds all the time. And that's because everybody was pretty bad compared to where the pro gamers are these days. Uh, it's interesting how after all these years of competition, the skill level is still continuously going up. Obviously, you can never really compare era to era very easily. For example, would a top of the line pro gamer from say 2013 be able to compete at this level of the game right now? Right? Like, it's just a different game. There's no real answer for it. I think overall though, since practice um, schedules and just every... Like, it's a community effort too, right? Obviously, it's not one player for each race coming up with every strategy. It is, well, literally hundreds of thousands of pro games that add up to what we now consider to be the standard. And yeah, a lot of the build orders are just so refined these days that those early game cheeses that were very common back in the day, they are not quite as frequent anymore these days, but they still happen from time to time. I personally wouldn't mind it if some strategies, like for example, the cannon rush would make a bit of a comeback. The problem with that though, is we do have a stalker first, by the way, for creator, don't we? No, it is an adept, sorry. I already did look at the adept. Why are you hiding over here? All right, anyways. Um, it would have been kind of crazy, right? Like, the problem is if you if you end up buffing any of those early game cheeses, and I know there's already a couple of players that, well, are watching this video right now. They're like, Loco, no, don't say it. The thing is, if you end up buffing, for example, the cannon rush, <laughs> I think everybody below probably Master League or so is just gonna have to deal with those strategies over and over and over again. And honestly, as it is right now, when you are below the professional level, you do deal with those cheeses a lot. It's just that the best players in the world, they don't really lose to a lot of stupid stuff. Yeah, it's just kind of the nature of things. Alrighty, very conventional opener right here from Creator. I thought for a second it was going to be a Stalker first. That would be him cutting a corner, especially against somebody like Dark that is a little dangerous. Relatively quick Roach Warren here from Dark, so we'll have to keep an eye out on it. But then again, this is Dark. I mean, sure, build orders are very refined. <laughs> Maybe the rules, quote-unquote, the rules of the game are very well known at this point, but Dark, he knows the rules, he wrote them down on a piece of paper, he shredded them to bits, and then he threw them in the fireplace, right? Like, that's basically what Dark did. It's... It's obvious that the man has got a very good understanding of the game, because Dark truly is one of the best players in the world, but the way that he plays the game is just so wild. Like, you can look at two dozen Dark games, and his lair timing, his roach timing, like, all of the timings are just ever so slightly different every single time. So he's got, he's got the rule book. he knows what he should be doing, but he just, yeah, he, he, does, he does a lot of feeling-based stuff, which, on the one hand, may be considered suboptimal. On the other hand, though, it may just actually be, like, the next evolution. 
right? Rather than playing like an Excel spreadsheet, it may actually be a little bit better. As we do see four drones going down, not bad right there by Creator. Uh, but it may actually be a little bit better to be more of a feeling-based player. Speaking of Korean Zerks, though, I have not yet mentioned this in a video, but supposedly, and if you're an ex if you're a fan of StarCraft, I was gonna say if you're a fan of Zerk, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you're a fan of StarCraft, you'll probably like this. Supposedly, Rogue is just about to wrap up his mandatory military service over in South Korea, and he is expected to make a comeback to the game. I'm very excited for that. Roke is one of the contenders for greatest player of all time, right? Some players will consider him, some StarCraft fans and some commentators even, some commentators who will not be named, uh, do consider Roke to be the greatest StarCraft player of all time. Yeah, to hear that he is just about to wrap up his military service and that he may very well come back to the game, it's very exciting to me. Then again, we may very well have to say goodbye to somebody like Dark here in the near future. Anyways, I haven't really talked about the game all too much because nothing's really happened. There's always somebody in the comments who's like, Loco, talk about the game! We're now six minutes and seven seconds into the video and he's still not talked about the... He's still not talked about the game! Sorry. Sorry, guy in the proverbial comment section. It's just that I've seen a lot of games, okay? The, the most interesting thing so far in this match is this infestation pit. Ooh, and a Nidus Worm. You know what? The Infestation Pit is by far the most interesting thing, because I think that Dark is just about to make the Forbidden Unit. This is a unit we don't talk about. This is the unit... Yes, there it is. This is the unit that Zerg players consider to be pretty bad, but also pretty good at the same time. It's the Swarm Host. A thing of legends. Also a unit that did fall off over time, mostly because players got much better at dealing with it, but it's kind of funny because even though players are technically capable of dealing with swarm hosts, realistically, since you don't play against them very often, you may just have forgotten how to do it perfectly, if that makes any sense. Second robo facility goes up on the other side of the map to get away a robo bay, so Creator is planning on going into a bunch of... Oh, interesting spot for it. I guess we're gonna be flying the Locust on over in this direction. Okay, um, I think he's probably planning on going for the Colossus. He does know that this at the very least is an option. Yeah, he's seen the lack of Hive and now he sees them as well. There they are. The most dangerous unit in the game. Swarmos has already popped up its ugly head in the bottom left hand corner and the first Locust Wave is flying on in. First wave is usually the most important one. Eh, this is decent. Yeah, you know what? You blink twice, that's the thing about Swarm Host, you blink twice and your entire mineral line is gone. Like, eight probes, even though he seemed like he was managing that quite well, still feels like a lot to me. Second Nidus Worm right now up north. We're going up to 17 Swarm Hosts, by the way. And here's the second wave of Swarm Hosts, so rather than activating all of the Locusts in one go, we're activating them, um, yeah, one at a time, which is kind of an interesting thing to do. This means that he can continuously send units, though, and wave after wave of Swarm Host Locust towards the side of the Protals. Alright, well, Prism has been denied for the time being. Hive is coming up, Hydro then as well. Problem for Dark, of course, is that this is a very supply-heavy unit. So he doesn't just have... Like, he's now maxed out. Like, this is as good as his army is going to be. This is basically it, plus a bunch of Swarm Hosts, right? Like, it's a very small army. And some of you may say that it's not the size of the army that matters, but how you use it, and I would agree with you, but in StarCraft 2, numbers are very important usually, okay? Now all the Locusts, though, are gonna be activated all at the same time. We do have a Stasis Ward. A Stasis Ward, I mean, it could trigger a lot of them. Roach Ravager army coming in, okay? He's only landing a few of them at a time. Brilliant control right there by our Zerg player. Trying his best to see if he can potentially push for the victory. But Creator does back off. Okay, look at the creep spread, by the way. Yeah, very lovely. It's funny because I just actually casted the Mio Micah versus Astrea series that went up on my YouTube channel yesterday. Um, I'm casting these back to back. <laughs> In that series, there was basically no creep spread. <laughs> there was no creep spread from the Zork at all. Very fun games, though. I do definitely recommend you go check them out. Very different than what we have over here. In that game, I did talk about the game. Uh, that series, rather. I did talk about the game in the first six minutes of it. I know, crazy. 
Uh, he's gonna try and collapse on top of this. Oh my god, we have a massive locust around in the making. We do need to shut this down ASAP. Do you want to storm your own units though, creator? Great flank right there by Dark. Instantly remaxes. And now suddenly Creator is finding himself way down in supply. He was already down in supply. Right now, it got even worse. Did he make a Lurker Den? He did make a Lurker Den. Yep, we're gonna go for the Lurker upgrades. I love it. Great stuff right here by Dark. And I think this is probably the best way to play Swarm Host right now. Just rush them out as quickly as possible, use them in combination with a Nidus Worm, and then transition straight towards Lurkers immediately. Because the problem is, if Protoss manages to max out, or manage to, yeah, maybe get up to like 120-ish army supply, 110, 100... The more army supply, the better, basically, for Protoss, right? If they manage to get a large army, usually those Swarm Hosts fall off pretty hard. But usually, obviously, they're gonna be countering the Swarm Host using a ground-based army, and it turns out that Lurkers are amazing against ground-based Protoss units, so... The dynamic is really strong, as we do have a... Ooh, where did that Locust Wave even come from? I'll back off for just a moment. Yeah, those Swarm Hosts... They, uh, they decided to pop out of the Worm, and they're gonna be flying all of those Locusts... ...straight towards the natural expansion, and spoiler alert, I think that these are gonna be killing... ...that Nexus. Yeah. This is a lot of Swarm Hosts, by the way. I feel like every single time we've seen Swarm Hosts play... ...from Zergs over the last couple of years, it's been... Yeah, maybe a maximum of 12. This is 17, which is an odd number. Like, literally. Yeah, lovely movement here by Creator, though. Getting a lot of value done. Dealing a ton of damage right there to that Zerg army. And you can see that this Zerg army is not really... It's not really very impressive. The Stalkers once again show up. Lovely work right here by Creator. Honestly, making a very good situation out of a couple of bad engagements. He's gonna have to retake his natural, I would imagine. Either that or he believes that he can win the game, but now the Locusts are gonna be used defensively once again. And this is a good bit of damage done here by the Zerg. One of the... One of the Swarmos does sacrifice itself. Queen's at the front. I mean, this is a lot of damage! Can Creator actually just win the game here? Lurkers are coming. There's six of them just about to pop out of their cocoons. Worker count currently in favor of the Protoss, but that's because, well, we have 30 workers mining over here in the center of the map. Ooh, really nicely done here by Creator, to be honest. I don't know if it's the best decision making, but... This is way closer here with this all-in of his than I thought it was going to be. Ultimately, though, it was an all-in, and it didn't work out. So GG is called. It's Dark who obtains the victory with the Forbidden Unit. Site Delta is game number two. I've decided to fast forward through the first two minutes of the game. Creator, he managed to block his opponent's natural expansion. He decided to send out a probe straight across the map and... Well, Dark, he's forced to take the third base, but on this particular map, Zerg players don't really care. Because it means that you can start spreading creep straight from the third base towards the other side. Stargate opener here once more from Creator. It is going to be an Adept, I'm assuming into a Stalker, or maybe another Adept. Yep, Adept into Adept. Totally fine. A little bit of a deviation from the previous game, but nothing all too crazy. Alrighty. Probe still hanging around in a natural expansion. Eventually that base will also be taken here by the Zerg. Scariest part here usually in the early game for Zerg is the fact... Oh, he's actually spreading that direction. Fair enough. Uh, the crazy... The scariest part, I guess, for the Zerg here is he does... Uh, not lose a drone. Is the fact that these adepts can obviously shade in between the main and then also the third. So obviously, since you don't have link speed yet, and because the queens can't really help each other out. Yeah, this is a bit of a finicky opener. If you miss rally a bunch of your slow links, that does make the game a bit tricky. But there is a zirkling though inside of the main base right now of the Protals. It will see that it's a Stargate opener. Okay. Adepts shade into the main base, two of them. They do end up getting surrounded. Eh, okay. Two drones and a Zerkling. Yeah, five links right now in total. Yeah, yeah. Problem is, if you lose those Adepts, maybe on paper it's not that big of a deal, but now suddenly it becomes difficult to take the third Nexus. So, we do have an Oracle already out. That Oracle is on the other side. 
And with this Oracle now on the other side, taking a third base is basically impossible. But, I mean, there's no second queen available yet. Brenda's just about to pop. There she is. I don't think Creator justified the lack of a third here. Now he's going to be taking it. This is about 20-25-ish uh, seconds later than when it's supposed to go down. So it's quite a significant delay. Of course, one thing you always have to keep in mind here when you're going up against Dark is the fact that he may just be loading up all of his queens inside of a Overlord, right? An Overlord or two and just ferry everything towards the other side of the map. The German taxi build is still something that we see from time to time. It's not very popular in the current meta. Judging by the fact that there's only two drones in gas, I don't think we're gonna see it here, but... It is an option. Twilight Council together with a forge right now on the back of it for Creator. And... It looks like we are settling in for a nice little macro game once more. Stasis? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. That is really sloppy. That is by no means worth it. Oracle number two shows up. This one is going to be able to get three additional kills. That's nice. But Oracles really do gain a lot of value over the course of a game. Yeah. This is not quite that clean early game you're really hoping for. I feel like both the Adepts as well as the Oracle were kind of unnecessary. I understand that I'm asking for a lot, because 9 drones is not bad at all. And this is still a pretty good opener, it's just... It could have been slightly cleaner, you know? Like, the losses that we saw... Like, the damage the damage done was really good, but then the losses we saw seemed a bit unnecessary. Not a huge deal. Creator should be able to macro his way out of this quite nicely. A depth shade right there does get cancelled. Alrighty, so, Dark is going to finish up his lair once again. Are we gonna go into the Swarm Host? I wouldn't mind seeing it, but... Maybe that makes me a bit of a masochist. At this point, he does not yet have a Roach Warren. He does not yet have a Hydra Den, a Spire, he's got nothing. He's only, yeah, he's only got a bunch of Zerklings, but the problem with Zerklings is that they're currently not upgraded. So say, for example, Creator decided to go... It's a straight Hydra then. Okay. Say Creator decided to go for some sort of all-in. Really, any flavor of an all-in. Dark would have been in a world of trouble. This is actually a very greedy opener from the Zerg. Even now taking a fourth base before any tech. So there's no Bailing Nest. There's no Roach Warren. There's nothing. There's just nothing available here for Dark to defend against any aggression. So this is very much so Dark playing the opponent rather than the matchup. It's another one of those things that makes Dark a very scary player to go up against. He's cutting a lot of corners, yes. But he's not doing it in a silly way, right? Like, it's not really a... It's a coin flip, but it's a, it's a weighted coin. He knows that Creator likes to play macro, usually. I don't think he would ever do this, for example, against Hero. But since he knows that Creator likes to play a fourth Nexus, if he can get away with it, he decides, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and... Yeah, flip a coin, and I know it's gonna land on tails 80% of the time, so... <laughs> I know what I'm choosing. You gotta love it. Plus one, plus one right here, so full glass cannon approach. There is the infestation pit. Charge coming up right now on the back of this. We do have a whole load of stalkers here available for creator. Who's gonna go into disruptors? Okay. So stalker disruptor into zealot storm. Quick disruptor play, though. Now, he's got a scary amount of units. The supply count here is not deceiving you. Creator has been macroing very, very well. His upgrades are good, his economy is good. It's just that right now, he's gonna have to play a macro game against Dark. Which does seem a bit scary. It seems like, by the way, a lot of the Korean pros are now convinced that... Zerg versus Protoss in the late game is now Protoss' favorite. I still... I, I still don't quite believe it, but I, I keep hearing this. Now, from what it's for, for what it's worth, I do... Oh, God. I do keep hearing this from Zerg players in particular. They believe that late game PvZ is favored right now in favor of Protoss. So, yeah. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. 
Whenever you hear any programmer talk about balance, you always have to take their bias into consideration. There's actually uh, a great Hero Marine video up on his YouTube channel where he's talking about the new patch. I think that's a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Listening to programmers talk about balance is always an interesting one. I try my best to be unbiased, but obviously... I mean... I'm also just a man. <sighs> it is interesting, though, to uh, listen to pro gamers talk about balance. My favorite is whenever, like, Terrans and Zerg professionals, they clasp hands together and they start discussing how terribly overpowered something like Protals is, and you're like, all right, guys. <laughs> that is really convenient, huh, isn't it? All right, lovely snipe right there on that lurker. Forcing the cancel as well on that spore crawler. A lot of Zerklings are preparing themselves for a wrap around here. Creator's got a scary big army. Two more disruptors are gonna try and bowl a strike. No strike there, but not bad. Transfusions from the Queens are gonna try and keep these units alive. We do have an observer here in the mix, it looks like, so most of the creep at the very least can be denied, or do we have an observer in the mix? No, uh, yeah, we do have two observers. Yeah, there is one right here. Okay, I didn't see it at the front. Thought for a second it was maybe just a revelation. Here we go, though. This is where Dark decides to pull the trigger. Tries to get the full wraparound with all of the Zerklings, but good force builds right here by Creator. Negates a lot of that, uh, that area damage. Lurker's also not quite participating in this fight. Yeah, Dark decided to jump, but I don't like it. Very well handled right there by Creator. Creator really has gotten a lot better over the last year or two. I say, as the man loses two Colossi for free. But he really has made significant improvements. The fact that he... Like, he makes those decisions that I feel like are sometimes a bit questionable, but then he makes them work. And that is impressive to me. Because you have to have trust in your own abilities. But a Colossus is gonna end up going down. Still, though, look at the supply count right now. This is not really that big of a Zerg army either. Protoss right now, though, basically all the way back down to only gateway units going up against Lurkers. But with the amount of Chaos that's around here, they're actually sort of making it work. Looks like this entire right side base, though, is completely cut off. And I think it should be an easy kill right here if he does decide to focus fire with his Stalkers. Good control right there once again on the Stalkers. Trying his best to deny all of that Lurker splash damage. Gets two of them. Lurkers are now being countered as well by Immortals and Archons. Really well done right here by Creator. Yeah, the control right there on those basic gateway units was really solid. That can go horribly wrong if you don't micro it the way that Creator just did. But when you do, it may just obtain you the victory. Oceanborn is going to be our final game for today's best of three. Well handled right there by Creator. Not really making any critical errors other than maybe losing those Colossi. I feel like we saw three Colossi going down that really didn't need to. Imagine if we would have even just kept one alive right there at the very end. That would have been a massive damage improvement, especially against those Zerklings. Yeah. Seems like Protoss players are playing a lot more gateway unit heavy lately. Obviously they always have, but even more so than in the past. Well, that Zerkling just managed to get in lovely dovely right there by Dark. He saw the shade of that Adept and he's now gonna see that it's once again going to be a Stargate opener. Well, now the Zerkling is dead, however. That's a little sad. Alrighty. My voice is feeling pretty good again, by the way. It does, it does still sound a little bit funky. At least in my own ears. A couple days ago, my voice really wasn't feeling too good. I think I've got myself a little bit of a cold. Which kind of sucks, but... Oh uh, yeah, he does get one kill right there. Okay. Two adepts in the natural of the Zerk. Let's go, creator. I think he missed one shot there. He probably could have killed one more, but... Not bad, although losing a, a probe right there to a single Zerkling is, of course, a little bit sloppy. Okay. 
Yeah, I'm feeling like I've got a bit of a cold, but I'm actually uh, waiting for an operation right now for my ear. This is completely unrelevant or irrelevant to this particular uh, uh, ZVP. But I don't know if it's the cold or if it's because of, uh, I don't know, my ears not being 100% healthy at the moment. Uh, I should have an operation within the next couple of months. Eh, maybe the next three, four months or so. There's no rush on it, but it is something that needs to get done this year. So at some point you start wondering, you know, do I just have a cold or is this just like a byproduct of my ear not functioning the way that it should be? It's kind of rough. I've had ear problems my entire life, in case you're unfamiliar. I've talked about this a bunch, I think, in previous videos, but... Um, I have had many ear operations, especially when I was younger. Now it's been about a decade or so since my last one, and, uh... Turns out it's back! Ha ha! Ha ha! Yeah, fun! Good times! <sighs> That'll be an interesting one, for sure. Twilight Council together with a Forge once again on the back it is right here for Creator. Who's gonna do some multi-pronged harassment right now with the Oracles as well as the Adepts. Or maybe we're just gonna put them in one big ball, yeah. Revelation ability is not quite as expensive as it once used to be. So just getting rid of some of the creep here is really quite nice. There's its blink once more, and there is the plus one go around weapons. Okay. Clean early game here from Creator, all things considered. Yes, he did lose two adept, just like the previous game, but this time around, I, I like the worker kill count a little bit better, and I think overall Zerk has just been disrupted a bit. Uh, then again, though, this is Dark, who's playing a very greedy style once more, because only just now is when Link's feed is going to finish up. So this has been him cutting corners left, right, and center. If Creator is looking at these replays himself, I think he should 100% make note of this. Because Dark is playing him for a fool right now. Like, Link Speed finishing up at 6 minutes and like, what, 25 seconds? Plus one melee, Roach Warren, I guess. But like, any push before this point in the game would have probably won Creator the game. Right? Like, there is no defense at all. Now, it turns out, Dark, of course, has got this lined up really well with the Stalkers finishing up their upgrades. So, plus one is going to finish up before these upgrades right here for the Protals. So, Dark is going to be perfectly prepared against the normal follow-up from Protals. But... Yeah, this is certainly too greedy. There's no way Dark would do this against players that are a bit more aggressive in the earlier stages of the game. Then again though, maybe Creator does know and he just simply does not care. Maybe he's got faith in his own ability and he does not feel the need to try and punish it. But I think you do need to punish Dark for these sorts of things, because if you're gonna let him get away with it, he's gonna do this to you in Premier Tournaments as well. So this series is from the KSL, the Korean StarCraft League, which has like 500 bucks on the line. I believe this is the semi-finals? It's gotta be the semi-finals, yeah. Not the finals, because the finals is a best of five. Anyways, I actually don't know who ended up winning, of, uh, winning this particular one. But I will certainly make sure to cast some more games from this event as well. So if you are interested in some high-level StarCraft 2, I try to bring you the very best games of StarCraft that are currently being played. Do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. I try to upload eh, about five times, six times, sometimes seven times a week. Maybe that's a little bit much. Lately, I've, I've actually been posting about five times a week in the last couple of weeks. Which has been... Uh... <laughs> Here's the thing. I try to take two days a week off, right? Now, it sounds funny because I play video games for a living. But I've been trying to, like, dedicate a little bit more time to, quote-unquote, taking time away from my computer. Because I spend a lot of time at a computer otherwise. I'm still working, probably, like, quote-unquote, working, right? Do I really even have a job? I don't know. But I still probably work about yeah, 50 to 60 hours a week on average. So it's still quite a lot. But usually what happens, so Wednesdays is usually one of my days off. Usually, beautiful stasis. I still find myself working about half the day. So what I've been doing as of late is just nothing on Wednesday. I've been doing nothing these last two weeks on Wednesdays. And it's been really nice. 
Yeah. Actually doing nothing. I've been doing a lot of miniature painting lately, which is incredibly nerdy, but I've been enjoying it a lot. I'm uh, painting up a Warhammer Age of Sigmar army at the moment. I've been posting actually some progress photos and whatnot on my Instagram, but anyways. Bailing a roll by over here, or at least attempted. Good crisis management, although, yeah, one still sneaks through the cracks. Nothing to write home about. Well handled right there by Mr. Creator. Prism at the bottom of the map will be pushed away, but the Zealots managed to stay alive. Okay, now what I'm interested in seeing here from Creator is... If he's gonna make the transition towards Skytals. Because this is not a game that's really forcing Protoss to go to Skytals yet. There's no Lurkers, there's no Brute Lords, right? Those sorts of units usually force Protoss to go for either like a more aggressive Stalker-based army or just like, you know, obviously a Skytals-based army. So far, there's no reason for it. I wonder if Creator is gonna make the decision to play Skytals if he's not if he's not provoked to go ahead and do so. Because right now, he's basically maxed. This would be roughly the time where we could see a transition like that. But he's still just doubling down on ground for now. He's got a scary army. All right, here comes the swarm. Here comes the swarm. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, he's gonna try and collapse on top of this Protoss army. We do have a lot of force foods available though. Okay. Eh. Archons in the front. Archons can take a beautiful splits right there. Whew. Well, the base is of course gone at this point, but Archons can soak up a ton of Baneling hits. Looks like the War Prism ended up saving a few low HP units too. Blinking after the Roaches and the Ravagers? Well handled. This is off of just 74 drones right now for Dark. His economy is nothing to write home about, and in the meantime, those Zealots ended up killing a hatchery down south as well. So, big picture, we currently have four hatcheries right here in a, a lair. Hive is coming up, but this is a stellar economy as well for the Protoss, right? It's not like Protoss really needs a fifth base yet. Now, that is a problem though on this map. You do need a fifth eventually, yeah. So, he did lose it just now, which is fine. But there is a moment where you are going to need to have it, because otherwise you will just run out of steam. Maybe Creator, though, feels like this is an opportunity for him to go ahead and just win the game. This is a scary army. Heavy Colossus focus today. You love to see it. One of my personal favorite units. Okay. Stalkers floating to the surface after dying right here on Oceanborn. No Skytals transition. No Skytals allowed. Hive is done at this point. I think what Dark needs to get though is Vipers. I don't think he can really fight this army from the... Mm -hmm. I think taking those Colossi out of the equation would be good, but he once again decides to come in from every angle that is possible. Great surround right here by the Zerk but also a very expensive set of losses. That being said, he does manage to separate those Colossi from the rest. And that means that Creator has just lost his heavy hitters, but once more, he's doubling down on a gateway-based army. Here comes Creator. This is what he did in the previous game. Stalkers are left over. Immortals are coming up on the back of this. He is ready to try and slide a knife. Well, wherever he gets it, really. Yeah, preferably somewhere where it hurts Dark the most, but it's so easy to overextend. Adrenal Glance, which is basically Stimpak for Zerklings, is about to finish up. Uh, maybe a half minute or so from now it will be available. Creator needs to be cautious, because at that point, those Stalkers are going to get, well, destroyed very rapidly. Okay, I think you kill the Hatch and get out. Kill the Hatch, get out. Yep. Lovely. Great decision here by Creator. Obviously, he doesn't know about Adrenal Glands, so you gotta do this based off of feeling. But he decides to go home. His fifth Nexus just finished up. In the meantime, by the way, Dark is re-expanding towards the top right-hand corner of this map. So he does finish another base. All right. Ooh, Ultralisk Cavern. Interesting. So rather than going into a bunch of Vipers, yeah, I think Ultras are not bad here. It's just that your opponent certainly has double Robo, maybe even triple Robo. And even though Stalkers and Colossi and Archons and whatnot, they all die to Ultralisks. 
Immortals are amazingly powerful. So if you manage to get a bunch of Immortals out, like Archons and Stalkers and Colossi, sure. But that does mean he's got the tech as well, as we do have a little bit of a skirmish over there. Zealots in the main base trying to go down. Okay. Him getting a glimpse of that... Uh, oh, he does kill the spawning pool here. Him getting a glimpse right there of the Ultra Cavern would be really big. But this Zealot run by is doing so much damage. Lovely control right here by Creator. I love the way that he's controlling the pacing of the game, though. Yeah, I kind of always get that feeling whenever I cast Dark games, especially against Protals, that it's Dark in the driver's seat, right? And he's really trying to play that style here, where he gets to decide the pacing of the game, and he is the one who decides what's happening next. But Creator is not letting go of it. Like, he's not letting go of the control. He's doing a good job. So one Roach, one Ultra, and one Viper. Walk into a bar. I'm not, I don't know the joke, but he's making one of each unit. I think I would have liked this better if Dark had like 95 workers, maybe 100 workers mining here all at the same time. Problem is that the cost efficiency of this army, yeah, exactly. Like, it's nothing to write home about. Obviously, Protoss is losing more gas, but I think this is okay. Especially, especially with more upgrades finishing up. Should be manageable for Creator. Does he have Storm done? I hope he does have Storm done. He does have Storm. Okay. Chitinous Plating, though, is going to be coming up momentarily. And it will catch Creator off guard. I don't think he has any idea that Ultras are in the making. Sometimes these Ultras, or maybe he just saw it. There's a chance. If he queues up Immortals, I think... Well, he doesn't currently have Supply available, so that's a bit funky. Um... But yeah, you do really want to have, I want to say, at least like four to six Immortals or so against Ultralisks. Push over here at the front. Well, now he certainly knows. A couple of Ultras are popping. It's just not big enough. The army right here of Dark is just not impressive enough. We do have a Parasitic Bomb right there on Colossi. Fair enough. Protoss is very far away from home right now. Hallucinated Archon trying to kill whatever it can, but it deals no damage. Immortals right there, retargeted to the Ultra, and the Ultra immediately pops. Reinforcing Protoss units, where are they? There they come. They come from the other side of the map. They had a very long trek to get across. Colossus actually lives with 32 confirmed kills and only 11 hit points. Eventually, it does end up going down as well. It is also going to float to the surface. But here comes Creator once again with his crappy fight. GG is cold. It's Creator who obtains the victory. 2 to 1 over Dark. Lovely work right here by the South Korean Protoss. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button. And like I mentioned, if you want to see more, I try to bring you the very best games of StarCraft 2 that I can. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, of course, a special shout out to those absolute legends that have been scrolling across your screen, my Patreon supporters. If you're interested, you can head on over to patreon.com slash locotv. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again tomorrow, or maybe the day after, for another video.